This video is brought to you by Masterworks. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. All right, today we're doing a little bit of debunking. Yesterday on social media, specifically Twitter, I saw this post from Shannon Crawford. I have no idea if that's a real person, but either way, it wouldn't exactly matter. This post is a sensationalized, scaremongering demonstration of different foods with various captions on top, which showcases alleged issues that most of us might be unaware of. One of the items in particular is what actually got me interested in the first place, so I'll talk about that when we get there, but this post has garnered a growing number of likes and retweets, a rapidly growing number, with more by the hour. Having immediately become skeptical, I decided to watch the entire video, and ultimately, here we are, debunking it, because what this video shows is almost completely untrue in every single conceivable or possible way. Let's begin. Item number one is processed versus natural cheese melting. One of them gets scary and black, one of them melts nice and clean. The video claims that processed cheese will not melt, but will instead burn when exposed to open flame. However, the reality of this claim is something else entirely. Cheese that is high in fat content melts. Cheese that is not high in fat content doesn't melt. It burns when exposed to a flame directly. To demonstrate this, there are entire health blogs and articles devoted completely to the process of melting fat-free cheese. Because in order to do this, you need to add vegetable oil, shred the cheese, and various other steps. But the end result is that you are adding lipids to the cheese, which will circumvent the traditional melting process facilitated directly by fat. This demonstration, in reality, simply shows a low-fat type of cheese burning on an open flame versus a high-fat type of cheese melting over an open flame. There is no indication of what is natural, no indication of what is processed, yet many people will now watch this video and believe that perfectly safe low-fat cheese is processed and harmful as a result. Which is categorically not true. Let's move on. That one was kind of boring. Item number two. This is one of the more interesting claims that required a bit of digging, which is mostly the fun part with these videos. The video shows something rather scary. Rice in a pan, melting because it is made of plastic, and companies are saving money and mixing plastic rice grains in with regular rice. That's terrifying, and yet the reality behind this claim is anything but. In fact, getting to the bottom of this one, plastic rice would be more expensive to produce and sell when compared to mid-quality white rice. It is a myth propagated since 2011, and yet here we are fighting that claim once again because sensationalism is always more interesting than reality. Today's video sponsor is something a little bit different, but an area I'm personally paying a lot of attention to given the fact that my savings are being eroded by the day because of inflation. Yay. A lot of people think to themselves during uncertain monetary times, how do I make money work for me? And the answer is that you can do what I think 8 out of 10 ultra high net worth individuals are already doing and look at alternative assets. One alternative in particular had an average appreciation of 33% annually last time inflation was this high. Technically speaking, that's more than gold, real estate, and the S&P 500 during that same period. I'm talking about contemporary art, blue chip artwork. Over 70% of the world's wealthiest investors have a portion of their net worth in fine art, because it can serve as an inflation hedge in almost any environment, according to Bloomberg. Even when inflation is at normal levels, contemporary art has still outpaced the S&P 500 by more than double for the past 25 years. That's why Masterworks, today's video sponsor, is bringing contemporary art to investors without needing a huge outlay. They select the artists, purchase the art, and securitize it. In other words, they make it investment grade. And then when the painting sells, you get any potential profits. So far, Masterworks has sold six paintings. It was three when they contacted me, so it's doubled since then, with an average net return of 29.03% to investors, through COVID, a bear market, and rising inflation. Masterworks has done so well that there's actually a wait list, but you can skip it just by clicking the link down below in the description. Big thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring the channel. Here we go. White rice retails in the United States for 82 cents a pound as of 2021, according to Statista. Wholesale and bulk sale, that price is significantly lower. On Alibaba, for example, out of China, you can get white rice for something like $318 per metric ton. That puts the price per pound at something like 14 cents. And when we think of the rice market on an industrial scale, with manufacturers distributing thousands of tons to packaging plants and eventually down the line retail consumers after a significant markup at every single stop, we can see that the cost of actual bulk rice sales from industrial farms is extremely low. Why does this matter? Simply put, this idea that plastic is being mixed in, plastic shaped like white rice, is predicated on the idea that it would be cheaper to do so. If we look at the raw price of polypropylene and polyethylene, two of the cheapest and most common plastics in the entire world, we see a raw price of $1,200 per metric ton, give or take. 
Applying a bit of math yet again, that would be roughly 54 cents per pound, which means the actual wholesale plastic, the cheapest kinds in the world, are already more expensive than mid-grade rice, without any sort of molding, processing, whatever else comes with it, labor, etc., machinery, or alteration in order to make them pass for legitimate rice grains. It is not cheaper to mix plastic rice with actual rice, it is far more expensive which completely upends the claim by itself. But I was actually kind of interested in this, so I kept digging. It turns out that this claim originated, or at least the earliest thing I could find about it, in 2011, where a news story claimed that plastic was being mixed with potato and sweet potato, formed into grains, and then shipped as rice. This claim then spread across the internet, refusing to die for the next 11 years. In 2016, the claims resurfaced, once again referencing the same initial story from 2011, but even in 2011, the claim of plastic rice was already false. Here's a YouTube video with a million views from 2011 titled, Watch Out for Plastic Rice from China. But the real story is that a specific type of desirable rice called Wuchang rice was being mixed in with cheaper alternative rice, not plastic, and being sold as if it were a better quality for more expensive price tags. Furthermore, to exacerbate this over-dramatized myth, every time the stories went viral over and over and over again for the past decade, videos would surface, like this one in 2016. The video shows a process where plastic is fed repeatedly into a grinder, pouring out the end as rice. But it isn't rice. Wholesale polyethylene and polypropylene are predominantly sold as granules, which look a lot like rice, but are a standard format for plastics. The video most likely shows a plastic recycling operation, where discarded plastic is fed into a grinder, not becoming rice, but being made into the standard granulated mixture that is actively sold to manufacturing companies. Top to bottom, the idea of plastic rice is dangerous and categorically false, but that's still just item number two. Item number three is what initially got me interested in debunking all this, but it's also one of the most damaging claims you can even make about food. The video shows a magnet being pulled across a bag of baby formula. Out come little black dots, and the video deceptively claims that these are smashed rocks that are used to simulate fortified calcium. One problem, rocks aren't usually magnetic. In fact, the default is that they're not. Those particles are not rock, they are probably metal. But if they're metal, that could still be bad, so what are they? It turns out that if the video is even real, which it probably isn't, we know that they faked the rice and lied about it already, if it's even a real demonstration, those particles are iron. Iron fortified supplements are common for infants in pretty much all parts of the world. Iron is an essential part of our diet. Many foods we eat are rich in iron. And while it's significantly more likely that the makers of this video inserted some kind of metal to then be pulled out by the magnet, the same experiment can be run on other baby food groups, like cereal famously, which yield legitimate results where particles of iron are being pulled by the magnet. But again, that's a good thing. Lying about baby formula and propagating lies about baby formula in modern times is completely unacceptable. The next one, claim number four, is really straightforward. Put pills on a tray, put them in the oven, the ones that melt are not natural, and the ones that do are natural. What the actual fuck? So that's just a product of the ingredients, right off the bat. If you put sugar in the oven, it does what some of these pills do. Why? Because that's what sugar does when exposed to high heat. Why is there sugar in the pills? because some of them are chewable, or aimed at kids. Pills taste bad. Sugar is an ingredient in plenty of chewable tablets, or a coating on other tablets, as are other selective ingredients, and every single one of those ingredients, natural or not, have unique interactions or reactions to heat. This claim is, once again, categorically false. Item number five, meat glue. I'm sure you can see the pattern, and this one is also completely not true. Meat glue is real called transglutaminase, or however you say it, but it isn't used to pack meat scraps back together into one single piece, like a steak or something like that. Transglutaminase is for making molded meat, and anything even remotely comparable to what you see in this video is fat or tissue or other naturally occurring pieces of the meat. This one was pretty simple. Item number six, though, is far more interesting, once again. This one claims that if you squeeze lemon juice over ice cream, you can see if there's washing powder in it. The idea on its face is plausible maybe, because unless I'm wrong, washing powder does kind of foam when subjected to an acidic liquid, but it's not in ice cream, right? The earliest example of this claim that I could find goes back to 2012, where a publication named Entertainment Times gave 16 tips for determining adulterated food. There is not a single mention anywhere I have looked online of any cases in history where washing powder was in ice cream. It's either the world's best kept conspiracy theory ever, or it's fake. 
There are documents I found from India in 2013 which explain how to test for adulterants, such as washing powder, but the FDA database has nothing. No other country's health database that I checked had a single thing, and I just couldn't justify any more time combing over foreign health and safety archives to disprove this already completely absurd claim. Next is the idea that putting seaweed in milk will show if there is rice water. But rice milk is already a thing, it's not harmful. Water is not harmful either. So even if this was true, and completely true at that, why would it matter? I don't know if some type of seaweed can react with rice water and turn stuff blue, but this was the point where I started to kind of lose interest in the less sensational claims, even though most of them are untrue. Next was oil and water showing that sweet potatoes have been dyed, which is fine. Maybe they are? I don't know. I, I really don't even know how to go about proving or disproving that one, since food coloring is definitely a thing, and you can certainly eat a lot of dyes that are made for food safely. Otherwise, we would never have colored cakes and candy and thousands of other types of food. So, oh my god, no way there's dye. Sure, whatever. But after that, another interesting one. Item number nine, I think, is coffee. Synthetic coffee, this is the claim, synthetic coffee will float while natural coffee will sink. But here's the thing, no it won't. Floating coffee means it is just lighter than water. Fresh ground coffee contains more trapped oxygen, and thus fresh coffee that has been recently ground is much more likely to float. Coffee that sinks is either old or contains additives that are denser than water. And hilariously enough, because they did get this completely backwards, the same website that posted the original claim about ice cream and washing powder in 2012 also posted about coffee. They claimed that coffee sinking is evidence of harmful adulterants, while this more recent video claims that sinking coffee is the totally natural and good stuff. This is where the video ends, for the first part at least, and I was going to continue on chronologically with every single item, piece by piece, but with that many of the claims being fake already, why would I? The credibility is already destroyed. However, I kind of wanted to know more about all this, so I looked at the history of this video. Turns out, this is not the first time that the video has been posted. Originally, created by a company called Blossom, the video amassed some 90 million views on Facebook in the first few days alone. It has since been taken down, obviously, but ever since that point, the video has cropped up again and again every few months or years on social media, shared by a new person or a new outlet who is trying to go viral and fearmonger or scaremonger, and it makes the rounds again over and over. This particular case where it surfaced again is relatively small. It's not tens of millions of views, but there are people all over the comment section of these videos lamenting how their coffee must be bad, or how everything is poison or fake or dangerous, etc. They are concerned for their health, concerned for their baby's health, concerned for their diet, and they don't know what to do because this video has made them believe that perfectly safe foods might be unsafe. It's just simply not true. The video is a lie, it is filled with deception, and hardly a single thing that, that it contains is true at all. Even, like, there's, you know how there's a grain of truth to most lies? There's really not even a grain of truth to any of these statements, or very few of these statements in this video. Same goes for the second half, but I got sick of debunking these dumbass claims, so I stopped. Seems like the video has poked its head out once again, hopefully it doesn't go viral. Don't worry about your food based on malicious clickbait, it's pretty much fine. Just don't listen to health videos like this, like, come on. That's it. If you want to support, there are links down below, primarily Locals and Patreon. Monthly subscriptions helps diversify away from AdSense. Merch, social media, the video sponsor, of course, another creator to check out, etc., etc., but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.